All right, welcome back F1 Manager Nation. This is going to be a short video. I'm just going to go over the Brazilian Grand Prix. So I just finished the Brazilian Grand Prix, both my drivers, and my legendary X26, I'm sorry, 39th. I finished 39th with my legendary account, and I'm going to check on, on my second account. Um, so I was reading your guys' notes. First off, let's go over the new subscribers. We got uh, Kubele Sentakea, Rafael Menezes. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Rafael. I Sorry if I'm butchering it. Um, Shahar Burstein. Christoph Zachu. Agrus BSB. Errol Hein. And Ankit Singh. Leandro Matos. And I think that's it for the new subscribers. But some of your comments, apparently. Um, so, Fokker Death Grips commented, stay positive, fella. I won my championship. And the only reason I did was because of you and your tips. The only thing I did different was change setup for each track. I think Monaco and Sochi, he went more grip. And the other ones, he focused on more aero. So there's a tip for you guys that are wondering. Um, I forget which one it was, but I think it was Series 3. In Series 3, I think you got to start focusing more on aero to make your car faster. And then by the time you get up to Series 5, 6, 7, um, you, sh you should only have like one setup that's kind of available that will handle pretty much everything and as you upgrade parts and a part becomes better or a driver becomes better you just switch over um give it a couple rounds on a low rank series and see how you do and if you're happy with the results then move them up to the higher rank series and give it a go freak has commented you're the only guy who i want to watch thank you very much i really appreciate that i left you a comment uh, Mike R commented, it said I didn't qualify and got no prize, yet I was racing yesterday and was ranked 12th with one hour left. Did anyone else have trouble getting their rewards? Um, so, on that point, Mike R, when I finished, I was up in 26th place. And I only had like a couple hours left. And then I switched over to my um, my legendary account. No, that's not right. I did my legendary account first and I had three hours left. And I think I only lost two places because he was 36 and he went down to 29. This guy was 26 and he dropped all the way down to 58 and all he had was about an hour left so there's there, guys what, what we all need to realize is there are a lot of people that are playing this game um and i am very glad to see that the game is as popular as it is and um because of that when I was playing, I, I started playing with only like three and a half hours left on my legendary account, and I didn't have any problems finding anybody to race. So I'm guessing there's probably a lot of um, procrastination racers, meaning they're going to wait to see how most people do before they get started. Um, it's kind of a, a cruel way to play the game. Because basically you're you're getting people's hopes up that they f they're going to finish higher, and then when they turn their computer on, um, 
they find out that they drop. So I lost 22 places in an hour. So Mike Ard, um, it's possible. And there you can see 58 out of 100. I didn't even finish in the top half. That was my uh, championship crate. So if you guys want to upgrade faster, the really the, the best way to do it is to just play the game. Um, you can see up in number one, he has 502 million. Um, there's a lot of people that at the end of the week, they have over a billion coins that they won. So, um, it's possible. You just, I, I don't know if there's like several people sharing those accounts where when one person gets off, someone else gets on. That's kind of a popular thing to do. Um, if I had the ability where I trusted somebody with my account, I would also do that. But, um, so you guys that are upset about your, your final positions and stuff, just know that, hey, I moved up to contender one. Awesome. thing that you got to remember is that um, if you're like me, you qualified for the highest uh, race championship that you could, which means that you're going to be going up against uh, other people that are in the same position as you, as you are, that are trying to go up to the highest race rewards that they can. But you got to understand that in doing so, you're also going to face a bunch of people who are going to go down to the lower ranking championships just so that they can do better. So that goes back to what I say about the series races. When you guys are in the series races, let me show you. When you guys are in the series races, right up on the top right corner of each series race, it tells you how many flags are available. So you can see you only need 20 flags to complete series one. However, I think it's like something like six flags, five flags, something like that. You can start racing in the great outdoor series. Now, if I don't get all 20 flags, that means I'm not gonna win. Um, I'm not gonna get my crates for winning. I'm not gonna get my uh, race crates. Um, the race crates always give you good um, assets. And, and in not doing that, my car is going to be slower. My drivers are going to be um, less skilled, which will make it harder for me to go from level one to level two. However, if I stay down in level one, I get all my race crates. I get all of my upgrades and my drivers and parts. Then I move up to level two. I'll still be competitive in level two. Again, I have... I started this second account with the goal of um, recording all of my races. Obviously, I missed some, but if you go through my video library, you should find a video where we have comparable stats. And then you can just go off of that video to see what my setup is and and what drivers I'm using and all of that. Um, when you get to series three, you're gonna wanna switch over to drivers that have higher wet, um, wet track ability because these tracks are gonna rain. Spa rains a lot, 
Silverstone rains a lot. And um, what's that? Uh, Austria also rains a lot. So you might give up some of your other stats, but if they have higher rain, you'll really see that when it starts raining. <coughs> if you have a driver with high rain um, stats and a driver with low rain stats, you'll notice the driver with low rain stats is going to qualify really badly if the track is wet. And then if it starts raining, he's going to have a hard time passing and staying on the track. So you're going to lose a lot of time. That's why you want to switch over to somebody with more um, wet weather ability. And then at Series 4, Series 4 is when you want to start um, focusing on aero. You want your car to be a little bit more aero. And all these other ones, I, I try to make it even. I try to make my car even, aero, and grip. So I have a, a consistent uh, platform to work off of. But if you do that and you notice that you're not competitive, um, you have to. You kind of have to watch the. That's the main reason why I like to watch the race from the outside view. You know, the whole track with the little dots going around. Um, if you watch, if you like, pay attention to what's going on. You can tell when a driver is using more power than you. And. Um, you can tell if a if a car if cars are catching up to you on the straightaway or if they're catching up to you in the turns. And if they if you find that you're losing time on a straightaway, then you need more arrow. If you find that you're losing time in the turns, then you need more grip. And that's basically how you guys would set up your um set up your car. Is it just me or does spa look like a an Uzi submachine gun. It kind of looks like an Uzi to me. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, um, Series 4, yeah, you're going to need more aero because those are much uh, better racing tracks. And Series 5, by the time you get to Series 5, you need to start working on your, um, your, pit, your pitch, your, your tire strategies. Um, I think when I got to Series 5 is when I started having to, because my drivers kept qualifying real close to each other. I think that's when I started having to use hard tires on one of my driver and have them go on a long run. And that's when I also found out that on Brazil and Mexico, my drivers can make it five laps on hard tires and three laps on soft. So that's when I started switching over to the one-stop strategy. And any track where you see you're going to get in the lowest amount of laps you're going to get on soft tires is three. Your hard tires should give you five. And at that point, that's your, your strategy. Um, if you're going to do a five, three pit stop and you start on hards, you're going to want to cruise the first two, three laps and then speed up, uh, give it full power for the last two laps of the first five. And then you just keep it with full power and you come in and you put on um, soft tires and you should be able to last to the end. Again, you have to make sure that you are using drivers that have the fuel ability to, to go um, fast for at least four and a half laps, five laps. Um, Grosjean and Perez, I think they both can do it. And again, like you're, you're going to find, guys, you're going to find that you're going to race a lot of races where you just totally outclass the other driver. And eventually you'll start to see the mistakes. I'm, I'm sure you guys see me calling out what the other drivers are going to do, what tires you're going to put on before they even do it. Like right off the bat, I'll say, okay, well, they're using high power, so they're going to have to pit on lap two, which means they're probably going to put on hard tires. And they go in and they do it. That's what I mean about paying attention. If you watch and you're going slow, and you can see your tire wear and you see your rival's tire wear is more than yours and you know he's going faster than you and you know you're going to catch him at the end when you go full power. Um, again, if this is your first video, you don't want to go full power at the beginning of the race because all the cars are bunched up and you're not going to gain anything. All you're going to do is go fast into the, the rear of the car ahead of you. And you're still going to be going fast, wasting tire and fuel, but you're not going to gain any positions because there's nowhere to go. The, the, there's a, there's a, a phenomenon called the concertina effect. If you don't know what that is, it's when you have a bunch of cars going all the same, same speed. 
if the lead car taps his brake, just taps it, doesn't even like really slow down, just taps his brake so the lights come on, that car behind is going to slow down, which is going to force a car behind to slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. And by the time you get to the end of the line, all the cars are going to be bunched up like right behind each other, like a little mini traffic jam. That's called the concertina effect. Um, that's why there's so many accidents in turn one, because everyone's traveling with speed and they all converge on that first turn. And if you're not paying attention, there's nowhere to go. So that's the main reason why I don't like to use high power. Um, at the beginning of the race, you save it till the end when it's when it's more useful. Um, also, at the end of the race, you're gonna have drivers on weird pit strategies. There's gonna be some drivers who are gonna be going slow, trying to conserve their tires or fuel. There's gonna be other drivers that their tires are gonna be totally bald. There's gonna be drivers that their tires they're on hard tires and their tires aren't um, you know are really really old, so their traction isn't there. There's a bunch of stuff that happens at the, the, the last third of the race that makes it easier to pass. So save your fuel and as much tires to, for the end of the race as possible. And once you get to series seven, yeah, this one's kind of weird because the races are all different. Like Monaco is a one stop. You can go four, four, where you go slow for the first three laps and then go fast for lap four. You pit, you put on soft tires, and then you go four laps fast. It's the only track I know that can do that. Suzuka is a weird race because it's seven laps. So, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to switch over there. Um, Baku. Baku's a, a weird race. It's a really long track. So, the way I do Baku is I go uh, soft tires. I start on softs. I go slow two laps, and then I go fast when I hit the um, when I hit the pit stop straight at the very beginning of the pit stop straight after the last little S turns or whatever. You know where the okay. So if you see the the track, there's kind of the round end, and then there's a kind of the square end. Okay, when you're going around the round end, when you're done going around the round end where the two tracks come back together, that's where you give it full power. And you'll be able to go for the rest of that lap and the, the whole third lap. And then you pit. Then you do the same thing again. And then when you pit the second time, you don't change back to low power. You just stay on high power. That's the way I handle that race. And Yas Marina is kind of weird. Yas Marina because it's a seven-lap race. And your soft tires are only going to give you two to three laps. So you can't do a one-stop strategy because you'll have to stretch your hard tires by going slow, which um, isn't good. And then you're gonna have to stretch your soft tires by going slow. So pretty much you're gonna have to go slow the whole race. And I don't know if any of you have ever tried, I forget which race it is, but you come up upon a race where you can go eight laps on hard tires. And when you do it, you figure out, oh, you got to go slow the whole way and you don't gain any positions. So going slow on any tire strategy the whole way is not conducive to winning. Um, yeah, so this is my video on the first Brazilian Grand Prix. Um, you guys saw where I finished. I answered your questions about the race. Uh, I know a lot of you are having problems with the race loading. Um, and I had problems finding races when I played, um, when I tried to race and it was like in the middle, it was in the middle of the period. And I tried to get into races, I was having a hard time finding them. When I played at the beginning of the period, I found races no problem. When I played at the end of the period, I found races no problem. Um, let me know if anybody else came across anything like that. Hey, I can upgrade the sync star. 
All it's going to give me is a little bit of reliability. Ugh, I hate when it happens. But you know what? I can also upgrade. Oh, I thought there was another thing I could upgrade. Oh, there it is, the smoothie. Four minus nine plus four. Uh-oh, I might be switching over to the Inferno. Are you kidding me? Okay, so... I had somebody ask me a question. Um, sh should I worry about pit stop time? Honestly... I don't really worry about pit stop time. It's great if I can lower the pit stop, but I'm not going to put a part on that's just going to lower my pit stop time. The main reason is you see that loss of three power and that loss of five grip. That's going to equate to more time lost than time saved by that almost half a second pit stop. So you got to remember, you're only going to be pitting once or twice a race. You're going to be on the track for eight, like seven to, well, six to nine laps. So you're going to spend way more time on the track. So you don't want to rob your power and your grip for more pit stop time because that's, that's counterproductive. So I'm not going to assign this part. I'm going to wait until I get an upgrade because I'd rather have the 87 power and the 50 grip. Than that, you know, extra. And I think it wasn't even a half a second I was gaining, so I think it only added a little bit. And Air Force One. Of course, none of these parts are any good until you get a much, much higher level. And they do that because they want you to spend your money. on upgrades. I don't know why Air Force One is 400 because I already got it. But I think it's 400 because it was available before I got it. So that's too bad. I probably would have spent some money on it, but I'm not dropping 400 for one asset. You can see Lance Stroll. You know, I got enough money. I can actually... I'll show you guys why I don't use them. See? So look, he's level 7. Do you think he's going to get better than any of the drivers? No. So, if you guys are new, save your money. Once you move off of Stroll and Albon, don't upgrade him. Never upgrade Kubica. He's not worth it. Never upgrade Gasly. He's not worth it. You're never going to use him. Um, Sebastian Vettel is actually a pretty good driver once he gets to, like, level 3, level 4. When he gets to level 4, his fuel management is almost full. So you can go fast um, longer. Magnussen is pretty solid. I know I say consistency in tire management, but his fuel management kind of makes up for it, which allows him to go fast for, I, I want to say like five and a half, almost six laps. Carlos Sainz is kind of the same way. Like my, when I first played, I didn't use him because of his consistency in tire management. 
But now I understand fuel management, which means when you have hard tires on, you can actually go fast longer. And the hard tires are faster than medium tires. I'm sorry, faster than soft tires on medium. And they're a little bit slower than soft tires on high power. So the fuel management kind of makes up for it. Max Verstappen, he's way behind. Norris is overtaking is way too low. We're gonna have a hard time making up places. Um, when he gets to level 10, he's actually usable. But right now with that fuel and that tire wear, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to go as fast as other drivers. Yeah, I think they did some of these drivers wrong. Just stats. And again, does anybody have a Hulkenberg past level 2? I have not seen Hulkenberg past level 2. If anybody knows if Hulkenberg ever gets good, please let me know. I know there's a, a website that lists it all. I'm not going to go look it up. I prefer to talk to you guys. Okay, so um, anyway, that's my video on the conclusion of the uh, Brazilian Grand Prix. Um, so far, from what I understand, everyone's getting pretty good results, which is good. This is the main reason why I started this video, so that um, the people that I was racing and I saw struggling, if they saw my videos, they would get some tips and start performing better and start having more fun with this game. Because I really like this game. It's, it's a real fun quick game and um there's a lot of strategy and sometimes there's a lot of excitement so it's a really fun game and i just wanted everybody to um, enjoy their time on it as much as i have been so with that i'm going to end this video it's about a half an hour long i'm going to end this video there and again if you guys enjoy my videos and you haven't subscribed already please subscribe that's the thing that keeps me going um, I'm up to 300 sub subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, probably about 310 by now, somewhere around there. Um, I would really like to get to 500 by the end of the year. So that's my goal. I'm trying to get to 500 subscriptions by January 31st. And if I hit that, I am going to be stoked. That's going to be my Christmas present from everybody. Or Hanukkah, which apparently Hanukkah is going through Christmas this year. Um, yeah, in fact, if you're celebrating Hanukkah, I shouldn't, well, you can't subscribe more than once. <laughs> I was going to say, I should get, I should get eight subscriptions from you. <laughs> but I don't think that's possible. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's my video. Um, you know what I would really like to know is, is there anyone that used Boosts? I have a bunch of them. I don't use them. I don't really know how they're used, what they're good for. If anyone can help explain them to me, I'd really appreciate that. Because they give me boosts, but I never use them. I never have to. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys don't have to either because your strategy is just solid. Um, I did race a few people that use boosts, and I never had a problem beating them. So even with the boosts, I think it still comes down to your pitch strategy. All right. Anyway, I gotta get, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go to work. So yeah, um, subscribe, like. Um, as you can see, I read all the comments. I answer the comments. Not quite all of them. Some of them I got answered by other viewers, which is awesome. And and yeah, just if you're new, welcome to the community. Um, the community's growing. It's getting very strong. Um, you can ask questions. If I don't answer them, there's a, a good chance that somebody else might. Um, so far, the, the advice that I've seen people give, none of it has been bad advice. Like, all of it has been pretty valid. So I don't think there's anybody out there trying to sabotage us or anything like that. And if I do find any sabotaging advice, I'll just pull it down for you guys.
So with that, I'm going to say good racing and a hooey ho till we meet again.